talk, talk to us about, I, I've heard you really talk about this accountability and the way you work mm. is you place that accountability onto the athlete. Talk to, yeah. talk to us about having accountability on your mental game as an athlete. What does that look like and how do you see it? Yeah, I mean, accountability is, to me, is another word for ownership. So, like, I don't want to hold you accountable at the end of the day. I want you to own your career. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, if I think of what's one characteristic that almost all the best have, it's ownership. So, like, they own they own their development, they own their performance, and then everyone around them is seen as a resource to support rather than someone, uh, you know, having to drive them to own their career. And so I think once you establish ownership, which to me the, the, the antithesis of ownership would be excuse-making, you know, give up sort of talk, you know, like, oh, it's not worth it, or, you know, constantly seeking affirmation through insecurity. So those sort of things are, once I see them sort of emerging, then what I want to try to do is empower the athlete to take some ownership over all the areas that are, they can that are threatening their performance. And I suppose once that's in place, so, you know, if the general concept of ownership is this is your career, not mine, I'm here as a resource, then you have to drive your development. So my job isn't to keep you accountable. My job is to support you as you take ownership over your career. Else all you're doing is forcing people to do things that they're not going to do with integrity. And, you know, I'd much rather have a group of athletes that drive things and then you're almost waiting to catch up with them because they're so demanding of you rather than having to chase them all the time to do work. So even at the start of the year, I, I say to them, listen, I'm not chasing anyone in the room for a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not messaging you for that. That's yours. But if you want help, I'll give you everything I've got. So that's sort of my approach. And then then it's working with the athlete around, you know, like, let's be honest, they'll more seek me out when they're not playing well. Yeah. This, um, yeah. Which is like, I, I can accept that. Like, I'm not bothered by that. This is what you do. But I think what's really important to recognize is that the, the other parts of your game, you don't wait till your underperformance emerges to take ownership of them. So why are you doing it in this area? And then so my responsibility as a as a coach in those settings is to ensure that they have the right information and the right tools and the right support to work on that. So if they come to me and said, listen, I really want to work on it and you have nothing for me, that's on me. That's completely on me. But if they know they have a resource and they know that the expertise that's in the room can help them and they choose not to, then listen, that's a, it's on them. What about the athletes that potentially don't believe in it? How, how do you try I to... I don't care. Well, how, could, are there ever, ever... Or I guess I'm, I think in my mind, I'm probably thinking about senior players, but then younger players yeah. who are... I have, like, a, I have a policy, like I've shared it before, feed the hungry. I'm not trying to convince someone to eat. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. That's... You know, but I love the challenge of it. Like I had someone during the Six Nations beginning of the campaign said, oh, yeah, we've had oh, two or three of you in the last number of years. We'll see how long you last. And I loved it. I was like, this excites me. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the Six Nations, he's one of my weekly one-on-ones every week boxing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It... But for an older player, like I'm, I'm not trying to be – facetious here or you know deliberately hostile about it I, I just don't i don't have enough time and energy to convince someone to work on something that's important but i suppose with the older athletes who haven't i had one the other day i spoke to said you got three years left in the career why don't we work on this stuff and make sure those three years end well and he was up for that hmm. you know so it's probably about how you reframe that and if he said nah i'm not interested well, okay sweet i'll move on there's 30 other people in the room that I've got to try and help throughout the period of a week, barely have enough time to get to all of them. So I'm not going to run around trying to convince people that they should have an appetite. You know, I just want to feed the people who are already hungry. Hey, if you've enjoyed that video, then you can click right here to watch the full unedited version of that episode. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel by clicking the button below. I'll see you soon.